Hello, everybody. We are going to be discussing hooves today, uh, primarily the heels of hooves. If you're new here, I'm a bit of a hoof nerd, and uh, we trim all our own hooves, and I've also done a course on it as well, but I'll cover more of that a little bit later. So I'm going to run three pictures across the screen, and by the end of this video, you're going to understand the difference of these three hooves and why. So here's the first one. Here's the second one. And here's the third one. Now, as I said, by the end of this video, I promise you're going to understand what is going on with these three hooves and what the difference is. So let's get started on that. Okay, so let's take a look at some video that's in slow motion, because for me, this is pretty much the only way that I can reliably <laughs> tell how a horse moves uh, and how those forces are applied when they move. So we'll take a look at Ruli here. She is uh, just having a little stroll in the arena. And if we watch the way their feet land, the force is coming almost straight downwards with a little bit of forward motion, even when it comes to just a slow walk. So we'll take a look at Gracie. She steps forward. A lot of the times that foot comes down and just sort of lands like that. A little bit of forward movement. Just a little bit. Even with the back feet. In fact, the back feet probably have a little bit more forward movement. Fronts. And here's a bit of a trot. Same thing. When the foot lands, it comes down relatively flat but with a little bit of forward motion. So we can imagine that the force being applied to the bottom is kind of, if the hoof is like this, then it's a little bit like this when they land. They land kind of like that. If we think about the walls, and this is the ground, then they would land a little bit like that. Okay, so there's Lena having a canter. We can see there's a little bit more, obviously, of that forward motion. But still, the feet are landing relatively, they're coming downwards, they're meeting the ground, coming mostly down. It's not a real forward motion like this. They don't land at a skid forward. Okay, with that out of the way, we now understand how a horse moves, uh, walking, trotting, and cantering. We know, and we can see objectively, that a horse lands kind of like that. Their foot comes down and lands like that. So we need to understand the physics that are involved when that happens. Now, the easiest way that I could think about doing this was to take some everyday objects, in this case, a toilet paper roll, a can, and this may seem odd, but spaghetti. And near the end, we're gonna actually take a whole bunch of spaghetti because we need to understand this, because this is actually part of how the hoof is made. Okay, now we're in a 3D program that I really like to use, which is called Blender, because it helps me understand what's going on inside of a hoof or what could be going on inside of a hoof. And I can run all kinds of little tests like this. So what we're gonna do is something simple though. We're not gonna go into anything too exciting. We've got a picture of a hoof from the bottom side. So if we look at this, we can see we've got the sole here, the frog here, these are the bars, and all around the edge is the hoof wall. So what we want to do is we want to mimic this shape so that we can make ourselves a hoof that we can look at in 3D. So I've already done that part way. I've made myself an outline, and you can see if I come down from a different angle what that looks like. It's just the bottom edge of the hoof, but we're going to extract that upwards to make the hoof. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go into top-down view. We're going to select our thing. We're going to go into what we call an edit mode. We're going to just select all of this top edge and watch this. We now have what's starting to be a hoof. Now it doesn't look much like a hoof just yet. It just looks like the same outline, but it is uh, taller. <laughs> Yes, you can say. So now the next thing we need to do is move this in a way that uh, will, will, will then look like a hoof. But we need a hoof to check out for that. So what we're going to do there is we're going to open up or show this image here. 
uh, on the scene and we'll go into our side view and we can see that we've still got a little ways to come up. Uh, the bottom is there. So we're just going to grab this and bring it up and then back like that. Let's hide the camera. And uh, that's getting pretty close. And then we'll just rotate this like this, move this like this, sort of match up the back and a little bit of the front. I think we can go with that. I think that's not too bad. Let's move this just a touch. Whoops, hang on. Got to get them all. There we go. Back to this way. And then just a touch more, maybe there. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Come out of that. And then if we take a look at this, we now have a hoof. The other thing about a hoof is that the top edge is usually a little bit more um, narrow. So we can take this and just just narrow that in because a, a hoof is actually a bit of a conical shape. It's not usually cylindrical. So back to our side view. We've moved that around a little bit to there. And then we can select everything and just make it a bit bigger. Move it there. And I would say that's probably a reasonably uh, accurate picture. We get rid of the picture behind and underneath. We've kind of got ourselves a capsule of a foot. Now, when we have it like this, we can look at it in all kinds of ways. We can look at it in a wireframe view. We can look at it in that solid view. We can look at it in, uh, we don't have any lights at the moment, but we can look at it in a uh, uh, textured view. And that's what the real bonus of 3D is. But what we really want to concentrate on right now are these lines, the way these are uh, angled uh, in relation to what the force of the hoof will have. Okay, before we go any further with some 3D stuff, we need to understand some physics. And to do that, we're actually going to have to do some physics experiments. So remember that toilet paper roll, the can, and the spaghetti? Well, that's where this comes in. Moving on to our physics tests. It's important to understand the physics of an object so that we can understand what makes it strong and weak. Let's take a look at something basic like a can. Now a can, as I'm sure everybody knows, if you try to squish it from the top down, it's a little bit difficult. I have a three pound sledge here, when I put it on top, it doesn't do anything. And I even have a 10 pound sledge here, when I put it on top, it still holds it up. 10 pound sledge is pretty heavy. But if we put the can on its side and put the three pound sledge on it, we can see that it starts to crinkle. If we put the 10 pound sledge on it, we see a really huge deformation. And this is, well, this is pretty normal. The strength of the can comes from it being vertical, not horizontal. This is something very important to consider. Okay, moving on to the toilet paper roll. Now the toilet paper roll is not metal, so we can kind of imagine that it's probably going to fall apart a little bit quicker. So if we put the three pound sledge on it, we can see that it actually holds it up and it even holds up the 10 pound sledge. Imagine that, it's just paper. But it's the shape of it that really matters. This physics test is important to show, to give an example of how the shape and the force applied in which direction of that shape really matters. Okay, so this is just a paper towel roll. Obviously it's going to squish when we uh, put the hammers on top of it, especially the 10 pound. Moving on to having this be on a little bit of an angle, you can start to see that the top starts to deform and the bottom with just a three pound sledge. If I get it to where I can slightly balance this 10 pound, you can see obviously there's that much more deformation and it's wanting to fall down backwards and the part where my hand is holding it wants to go forwards. Okay. I want to move on to spaghetti, but before we move on to spaghetti, I need to talk about how a hoof is built. Okay, so just briefly, we need to get into the nitty gritty of how the hoof wall is made. This is a really, really important thing because it helps us understand why it reacts the way it does to the forces that we've just finished talking about. 
So the most important part of the hoof wall is this thing called a tubule. A tubule is like our pieces of spaghetti, where we uh, have a very thin, sort of narrow structure. And a whole bunch of these live inside of the hoof. Here is a cross section of a hoof, and it's a very thin piece uh, taken off while trimming. And if we look at it at this macro level, we can see these little circles that exist inside of there. The thing is, the closer they are to the inside of the hoof, the more easy they are to see, and they start to sort of break up and bind together as they go out further and die off, essentially. But the inside, where they're actually born, essentially, from the top of the hoof downwards, these tubules hold the hoof together. All right, back in 3D, we are going to take a look at what just one tubule would probably look like if we were to sort of make it bigger here. And uh, we'll place that inside of the hoof wall. So I've got essentially just a basic cylinder because that's what tubules are. And if we move this over to get it to where it lines up inside of the hoof wall, it's going to look a lot like this, where we see this rod, essentially. It's like a piece of spaghetti, as we've shown, uh, going straight through all the way down to the bottom where it comes out or meets the ground and gets worn down. And that's what we see as hoof wall. A whole bunch of these little guys just sitting inside of there, uh, growing down to the ground, and that's going to make up the integrity of the hoof wall. Okay, let's get into the spaghetti physics because it's important to understand how this does kind of represent a tubule. And of course, we also have the experiment where we can test a whole bunch of tubules, which is essentially hoof wall that we have now learned all about. So with the spaghetti test, it's not anything different than the toilet paper roll or the can. We want to be able to test how it reacts to having a force applied in a downward motion. Now, spaghetti is a bit brittle, and one piece is obviously not very strong and will break. But if we put some weight just straight on top and we keep it reasonably balanced, it actually will hold. It's when it goes at a little bit of an angle that we start to see it snap really, really easy. And tubules aren't much different than this, especially once they get out towards the outer wall when they're all dried out and dead. They're not a heck of a lot different than spaghetti. So we can see that we can hit it on a surface and it'll take a little bit to finally snap and break. But if we start to hit that on an angle, then we're going to get it to break much easier. If we then move to the pieces that are all together, what I've done is essentially taped a whole bunch and then glued just the very bottom to sort of give the idea of exactly how a hoof is. It's not just tubules. There's a bunch of material that gets pulled in. The cellular structure of it, without getting into too much, does bind them all together. So there's a little bit more strength. And I can put a little bit more power. I can hit it a little bit harder. I can put a little bit more weight on top of it. But of course, once we get it at a bit of an angle, everything starts to bend and snap and, uh, and fall apart. Okay, here we are in 3D again, and we've got all three pictures here, just like I showed at the beginning. And this is where it's all going to come together, and you are going to understand exactly which foot was the worst, which is pretty good, and which is kind of okay. And I put them all together here so that I could model them and compare them side by side, and you can too. So let's let's open up uh, or let's show these uh, the images of the models that I've made. We'll just take off all the lighting, and we can see how they look here. You know, they're they're, they're three different shapes. Uh, one is a little more laid back. One is more standing up, and one is very standing up. Let's toss on these wireframes so that we can see them at the same time. And then what the heck, let's put the lights back on as well, because eh, it looks kind of nice. So let's go over these and make sure that everything has become cemented in. All the things that we've talked about are going to make sense. If we look at this one here, the one that has a little bit more stand up, we can see that the top of the hoof, the part that where everything grows out of, is a little more compact. You can see it kind of squishes in a little bit more. This is not ideal. This hoof is 
quite strong. It's going to put up with a lot of force perpendicular to the lines that it has, uh, but it's not ideal. It's not exactly what we want. Uh, so that's one example. If we look at the green one, all of these lines are running relatively perpendicular to each other. We've got good angles in relation to the forces that are going to be applied from the ground uh, to the hoof, which means that it should be able to tolerate a lot of force. And then if we go to the left here and we see this one, it's got right at the back here, lines that are running almost parallel to the forces that are theoretically going to be applied, which is what is causing this to happen even more, because we saw in our spaghetti example that when a force is applied, it's going to bend and then break and crack and make this, this heel that's going to grow or be pushed under even more in comparison to one that can tolerate the forces that are being applied due to the fact that it's more perpendicular to the force, just like our spaghetti, just like our can, just like our toilet paper roll. And also these lines are not running parallel to each other at all. These ones are, the ones at the back are very laid down and the ones at the front, while they are laid down a little bit more than we'd like to see, uh, not as much. So the whole foot is sort of creaking backwards. And we can see this even more if we take off all of the models and we zoom in really close we can see these lines doing exactly what our 3D model says they're doing. Even this one. You can see these little crease lines that run down the hoof. Right? Same with this one. And they come straight down. These ones here. These are straight down. And even more straight over here. So the 3D modeling really comes in handy. It is just pure physics of how the hoof works. So I hope that helps. I hope that makes some sense and uh, and has become really obvious through uh, visual direction of it. Hopefully that really helps out in understanding how hooves work. We've gone all the way back from how the horse moves to the forces applied when they do move to understanding the structure of the hoof all the way down to these little tiny tubules that live inside of that hoof wall that make it up and the importance of how from this spaghetti example, that if you apply a force perpendicular to it, it can put up with a lot. When it goes a little bit more parallel, it can't put up with it as much. And that is exactly how a hoof works. We cannot deny that. It is just pure science. So if you have any questions, let me know anytime. And if you want to know more, I actually have a whole hoof trimming course over on Stable Horse Academy, which is a new site that we put up. And it has one course on it so far, and that is about hoof trimming. I cover three horses and I talk about this kind of stuff. I talk about trimming all the way around and how to keep the hooves healthy as possible. That's it for now. I'll see you guys in the next one.